The following lesson is linked to learning outcome three, writing and presenting, and it addresses the assessment standard that requires learners to apply paragraph conventions to ensure coherence by using topic sentences, introduction and conclusion, logical progression of paragraphs, cause and effect, comparison and contrast. Would you go to a job interview in a bank looking like this? Would you apply for a place at a college like this? What about going on a first date like this? Hi, of course you wouldn't do any of the things we have just seen because you know the value of making a good first impression. In some situations in life, you get just one chance to put your best self forward. Writing is similar in many ways. You need to grab the reader's attention with a good first impression and make sure that they want to know more and will continue reading. In a piece of writing, this first impression stage is the introduction. By the end of the first paragraph, the reader will already be deciding if the rest will be interesting, well written and planned. As you know, it is difficult to change someone's mind after a bad first impression. But wait, there's more. You know how in courtroom dramas on TV, the lawyers always get one last chance to convince the jury? After they have presented all the evidence and questioned all the witnesses, they each get a chance to stand up and say their last words on the subject. This is called their closing argument and is one of the most important speeches that they make. Well, you have the same sort of challenge when you write something. Your concluding paragraph has to contain the message that you want your readers to take away with them. So your writing has to have a strong conclusion. You should never just stop writing because you have run out of things to say. Instead, you should plan to end with something powerful. Wow, that is quite a lot of pressure on two paragraphs, but it is true to say that your writing can be spoilt by a weak introduction and conclusion. And a really good introduction and conclusion can help make your writing memorable. So today we are going to spend the entire lesson learning how to write introductions and conclusions. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to write an effective introduction and conclusion. So let's go back to the steps for successful writing and revise what we should do first. When we start our writing process, we need to make sure we understand what we are being asked to do. For example, if the question asks us to discuss a subject, the introduction will be very different compared to if the question asks us to describe something. Next, we do the planning for the whole piece of writing. But when you do this, it is worth spending extra time thinking about how you will structure your introduction and conclusion. If an opening paragraph is well written, then you should be able to answer yes to all the questions on this list. Does it grab the reader's attention? Have the main ideas been developed by using supporting ideas? Does the next paragraph follow on logically from the introduction? We're going to use this essay written by a learner to examine how a good introduction and conclusion can improve your writing. And then we are going to look at the writer's techniques to learn how to achieve this with your own writing. But first, let's listen to an essay called Beautiful City. Dirty grey buildings stand above the littered hustle-bustle pavements. The only colour in this city is the Indian flower seller's vibrant stand, red roses, yellow daffodils, the colours of the sun itself. A choked, smoked, mournful, window-ledged, potted plant looks enviously onto the Indian's child. Oh yes, of course, there are other sides of Calais in our city. The yellow discharge river of the explosives factory, the red, green and blue fleets of rusty tins floating down the river. One must also not forget the fish drifting down the river on an oil-slick surface. 
the factory produces chemicals automatically, unendingly pumps pollutants into the air, into the river, and rubbish heaps grow. The city's dirty in all of its three dimensions. I'm not sure we can call it beautiful anymore. Wow, I really enjoyed that piece of writing, even though the subject matter was quite depressing. It was very well written. Let's read the introduction in more detail. Dirty grey buildings stand above the littered, hustle-bustle pavements. The only colour in this city is the Indian flower seller's vibrant stand. Red roses, yellow daffodils, the colours of the sun itself. A choked, smoked, mournful, window-ledged, potted plant looks enviously onto the Indian's child. Now let's check and see if the introduction to this essay meets the criteria on our checklist for a strong introduction. Does it grab the reader's attention? Have the main ideas been developed by using supporting ideas? Does the next paragraph follow on logically from the introduction? You may want to go through the checklist by yourself to see how effective you think this introduction is. Let's go through the checklist together. First of all, we ask ourselves if the paragraph gets the reader's attention. The answer is yes. The very first thing that the writer does is she uses a title that is totally opposite to the actual words in the essay. This contrast between the title and the actual content makes the impact of the description of the city even stronger. Now this technique can only be used when the situation is suitable, but you should look out for the chance to come up with a clever title if it is appropriate. The writer uses description to pull the reader into the story. She uses descriptions that include movement and colour. She talks about the busy pavements. The writer also creates a strong picture in our minds where she talks about the grey buildings and the contrast with the colourful flowers. This makes the flowers seem even brighter. Finally, the writer wakes up our emotions by making us share the feelings of the poor pot plant. This really makes us feel part of the story. Our next question is whether the main ideas are developed using supporting ideas. Let's imagine what the author's mind map might have looked like. We know that the title of the essay is Beautiful City. But the main idea is the opposite. In fact, the essay is about how awful and ugly and dirty the city is. But we are only interested in the introduction right now. We find the main idea of the introduction in the topic sentence. Let's put it here. The only colour in this city is the Indian flower seller's vibrant stand. Now, as we know, supporting ideas can be examples, comparisons or descriptions. This writer uses descriptions. She describes the busy littered pavements, the grey buildings and the choked pot plant to support the main point that the city is ugly and dirty. Yes, looking at that, I think we can say that this is a well-developed paragraph. So now we just need to think about the next paragraph and the links from one paragraph to the next. Let's see what the next paragraph is. Oh yes, of course there are other sides of colour in our city. The yellow discharge river of the explosives factory. The red, green and blue fleets of rusty tins floating down the river. Here we see that the writer keeps using colour as the linking idea, as well as developing the idea of the dirty, unhealthy city even further. Now today's lesson wasn't just about introductions. We also have to look at that other very important paragraph. The conclusion. Let's think about what is important for a strong conclusion. Does it leave the reader with something to think about? Does it continue the main subject of the whole piece of writing? Does it sum up or wrap up the piece of writing? This is the conclusion for Beautiful City. The city is dirty in all of its three dimensions. I'm not sure we can call it beautiful anymore. This conclusion is short and powerful and fulfills all the requirements for a good conclusion. We are left with a single message or idea that we can take away with us. The city is dirty and is no longer beautiful.
This has the effect of tying all the ideas together neatly. It continues the main idea of the ugliness of the city and it also makes clear links to the rest of the paragraphs, maintaining the flow or logic of the essay. This conclusion neatly sums up every point she has made, referring to the three dimensions of the city which she has outlined carefully, and then she returns to the title of the essay and to her opening words. Well, with that example still fresh in your mind, it is time for today's task. In today's lesson, we read an essay that describes a learner's environment. Your task is to write the introductory and concluding paragraphs for an essay in which you describe your own environment. The second part of the task is to see how your introduction and conclusion measure up to the checklist we learnt about in this lesson. Does it grab the reader's attention? Have the main ideas been developed by using supporting ideas? Does the next paragraph follow on logically from the introduction? Does it leave the reader with something to think about? Does it continue the main subject of the whole piece of writing? Does it sum up or wrap up the piece of writing? Thanks for joining me for today's lesson. See you next time. Bye.